Far to the east lies the Middle Kingdom, the homeland of great thinkers and incredible artists, the land of mighty rivers, majestic mountains, and mysterious forests. The legendary Temple of South Shaolin first appeared here hundreds of years ago. Its inhabitants perfected their ancient techniques for centuries, training the body, mind, and soul every day. Fearless monks defended the temple from both ruthless bandits and the terrible forces of darkness. But their greatest challenge was the invasion of the Wuku, pirates from the east who landed on the country's southern shores. When the government, mired in corruption, was unable to withstand the enemy's assault, the Shaolin monks decided to break their own rules and help. Joining forces with the Imperial Army, the monks managed to defeat the Wu Ku troops at the cost of many of their own lives. Victorious, the monks returned to their monastery and life went back to normal in the coastal towns. However, for the young fisherman Wei Cheng and his village, trouble followed trouble, seemingly without end. And it's again in less than a month. I must find Grandfather. He probably went to fight them on his own again. You there, with the staff. Can you fight? I certainly can. But who are you? I'll explain later. Right now, we need to defend the village.
Wei Chong, go at once. You are no match for them. Oh, you bastard! Wei Chung lay bleeding to death in the middle of his plundered village. This was how our story would have ended if the Buddhist monks hadn't arrived in time. Making a stretcher out of their staffs, they placed Wei Chung on it and carried him for several days until they finally reached one of the local fortified houses. You have awoken at last. I am glad that my potions were able to help, for you were barely breathing when they brought you here. Who are you? How did I end up here? We are the monks of South Shaolin. I am Master Zhong Fei. On my left is Master Guan Li, the leader of our group, and Master Xuan Pai, his right-hand man. You are in our camp in an abandoned Tulu, not far from your village. Our scouts found you among the ruins and brought you here. Thank you. My name is Wei Chang. My grandfather was beside me in the village. Did he survive? I am sorry. We arrived when it was all over, and the village was nothing but a smoking ruin. You were the only survivor. Monsters. I will hunt them down and kill each and every one of them. Do you really think that these are normal bandits? We are sorry to bring you such sad news, but at least you are safe now. You are recovering quickly, and will be able to return to your relatives soon. Do you have somewhere to go? I lost my parents when I was still a child, and my grandfather raised me. The rest of my family lived in the same village. Fate has been harsh to you, Wei Chang. We will wait until you are fully healed, and then decide what to do. They cannot just toss you out onto the street. Lu Hai Bo asked you to see him. Lu Hai Bo asked you to see him. If you need any help during the battle, just call for me. I'm not Master Zheng Lung, of course, but I can certainly fight as well as you. Hello, Wai Jin. My name is Lu Hai Bo. You don't look like a monk. <laughs> You're a sharp one. I am but a poor merchant, as well as the captain of the ship Sparrow Feather. We will meet the monks in the south, in the Fujian province. The same place where the Temple of South Shaolin is located? That's right. They needed a ship to get over to Zhenjiang. I didn't take any money for the service and ended up staying with them. I look after the weapons and help them get where they need to go. I don't have a crew right now, so the monks themselves are helping me sail the ship. The first combat sailors of Shaolin in the world. I guess you have some balls, lad, and you can stand up for yourself. However, you must start using your chi in combat. Follow me, and I will teach you how to achieve it. Let us start with focusing on the internal power within you. Try to feel how it flows within your whole body, filling every part of you. Now, go ahead with one of the strokes, but keep it slow. Try to get all of your energy in it.
You're a quick study, Wei Chung, aren't you? Keep in mind that your power is limited, and it only fulfills during combat. Good job. Now you can either practice a bit more with Yin, or head back to Tulu. It seems like you have to deal with something there. Wei Chang, since you have almost fully recovered, I have a simple but very important request. Brother Zheng Lung has gone to the Temple of the Late Plum on Putuo Shan. We haven't heard from him in a while, and Lu Hai Bo is planning to sail after him. Can you help him? Of course, it is no bother. Plus, Master Zhongfei told me that I need to move more. Thank you. That would be a huge help. You'll meet Zheng Lung at the same time. He's one of the best South Shaolin warriors. I'll go and check the hold, since we recently developed a rat problem. I will wait here for you. Who are you trying to trick, Piedi? You have boxes of wine down there, not rats. These are herbal potions. Hurry up. I want to leave before noon. Strange. The gates are broken. I have a bad feeling about this. The temple is under attack. We must find Zhang Long as quickly as possible.
Mid shit. Finish off the monks and this lowlife, then burn this place down. Who are you calling a lowlife? Chasing Lung, are you badly wounded? I've had worse. Who is that with you, Daoshan? Is it really that fisherman? Yes, my name is Wei Chang. Shi Guan Li has sent us to get you. Looks like this Hulk has beaten the absolute crap out of you. That was only round one. However, I must admit that their leader, despite fighting with the grace of a drunk pelican, possesses superhuman strength. Quick, let's head to the ship before Li Hai Bo starts complaining again that we're dawdling. Zheng Lun, did you find out anything? The monks themselves haven't heard anything, but the Wuku still left behind a few hints. It seems that at least two clans are operating in this region. Red Clan, which attacked Wei Cheng's village, and Green Clan, which we confronted just now. We don't yet know if they are connected. Wait, wait! Did you say Wuku? That's right. Japanese pirates have reappeared on the shores of the Middle Kingdom although their attacks are still very infrequent. But you had crushed the Wuku five years ago. I thought my village was attacked by just another band of brigands who dressed up as pirates to scare people. They've done that before. I don't care if they're bandits or another Wuku invasion. I want to help you fight them. First, it's too early to talk about a full-scale invasion. There are different theories about what is happening, and our group was sent here to find the answer. Second, if we need help with fishing, we will be sure to call for you. Fishing? Hey, I fight better than you do. Yeah, pull the other one. How would a simple fisherman know how to fight? Staff fighting was a skill passed down through the generations in my family, as well as fishing. Grandfather didn't have time to teach me everything. But it was enough to defend our village from bandits. It'll certainly be enough to knock the teeth out of those filthy pirates. I've seen him fight, Guan Li. His technique is weak, but he has enough strength and endurance for two. I'll give him that. Plus, you know yourself that few survive with such wounds as his. As much as I respect our teacher, there is more at work here than infusions. And he can kill a pirate by grabbing him by the mustache. What if the pirate doesn't have a mustache? They killed my whole family and destroyed my home. Give me a chance to get even. Fine. An extra staff won't hurt. Come back when you are ready. I have a few tasks for you. I won't let you down. Well, Wei Chong, it is about time for you to fight alongside the true monks of Shaolin. Whenever you're ready to learn something new, I will be there for you, to show some of our combat techniques.
Master Guang Li was right. It's the Wuku. Let's whip their asses. I thought nobody would ever come to my aid. Thank you. You'll have to hire some burly guys with weapons. What is the Emperor doing about all this? The Wuku have occupied a small village north of here. According to reports, the same red mask swordsman who wounded Zhang Lung also led the attack. I thought masks were only worn on holidays. Every day is a holiday for that cutthroat. Silence, you idiots. Zhang Lung and Wei Cheng, you will come with me to free the village. The plan is simple. The village is surrounded by a thick bamboo forest, which we will use to sneak up to it. Once we reach the edge of the forest, we will draw closer together. If you meet the leader, wait for the others. Do not engage. It shall be done. Certainly, my general. Oh, why did I take you dorks with me? 
As soon as we are back, you are going off to meditate for two days and think about your inappropriate quips. Bastard did this to them. Have we come too late?
What is this? Another bothersome peasant coming to get revenge for his dishonored sister? <laughs> you haven't even pissed yourself in fear like the others. You always talk this much, or only when you're about to die. How daring! I like it! I'm about to add another head to my collection. Come on, Pipsqueak! Show me how you wave your hoe about! beheaded one of the Wuku gang and forced them to flee. I'm afraid that this is only the beginning, so don't let your guard down. You were a great help, Wei Chung. Well done. This doesn't cancel out the fact that he engaged their leader without waiting for us. I gave you clear instructions, fisherman, and you disobeyed me. And you weren't here, and he could have escaped. We had completely surrounded the village, so he had nowhere to run. That was the whole point of the plan. There is great power inside you, Wei Chung, but it is held back by your rage and hunger for revenge. 
I can take you under my wing and teach you everything that I know. But you must promise to obey Master Guan Li and I, and not let anger control you. All right, I promise. Our heroes didn't get to celebrate their victory for long. The Red Wuku clan, which had disappeared after attacking Wei Chang's village, suddenly reappeared in the south of the province. Teams led by the warrior in a white mask swept through the helpless villages, leaving behind only smoking ruins and mounds of ash. Wei Chung, you don't look so good. Are you having nightmares again? Yes, it's always the same one. I'm in the village again during the Wuku attack, surrounded by fire, death, and screams. And there stands a warrior in red armor and a white mask. Guan Li says that we are on the right path, and we'll be able to track him very soon, although he continues to elude us thus far. This clan is much more organized. According to the sparse reports, their leader acts more like a war chief than a pirate. I don't care what he's like. When we finally reach him, I will tear out his heart with my bare hands and feed it to the dogs! <laughs> you need a distraction. And I happen to have some good news. You have learned much from me over the past few weeks, but it is time for you to see certain things that we teach only in South Shaolin. Let us go outside. This fighting style is called Southern Elements. It allows you to use your chi to perform incredibly powerful hits. The first move is a round attack, which inflicts damage on every foe close enough to you. The second move unleashes the full power of your weapon over the head of your enemy. The, th now go ahead and try to use all of this in real combat. What is it, Shunpai? I am trying to write in my free time. I'm recording all our travels and adventures. Perhaps something worthwhile will come out of it at the end. There's plenty about you in there. You should check sometime that I haven't made anything up.
Thank <laughs> you. 
must take it with us. There was no horde, but we managed to find this object. It seems to be made out of jade and looks very old. The pirates probably wanted to sell it to a collector. At the peak of the Wuku power, a huge number of holy relics from plundered temples ended up in the hands of the rich. It's definitely a serious item, since it was guarded by quite an aggressive ghost. Those Taoist priests love nothing more than summoning spirits and gusting spells. Interesting. Shuan Pai, can you find out anything about this temple and relic? I don't want to wake up one morning with some demon eating my eyeballs. I will try, but my collection of books is quite limited. I will let you know if I find anything. Listen up, everyone. As you've probably noticed, the local authorities are still doing nothing. As if it's ever been otherwise. That's true. However, we have received a letter from an official named Wang Taixin. He has arrived from the capital to act as the censor and to restore order to the province. His powers are still limited, but his spies have discovered the location of the Wuku base. It is in a coastal cave not far from Wei Chang's village. They have been hiding right under our noses this whole time. We must go at once, before their leader eludes us once again. I know the cave. We'd often climb inside as children. Not many people know that it has two entrances. A large one from the beach, and a tiny one from the opposite side, which leads to a subterranean river. It's pitch dark in that part of the grotto, with little space and sheer drops on either side. The path is nearly impossible to spot from the inside, and the Wuku won't know about it. We can storm in through that entrance and use the element of surprise. A good idea, but such a plan won't work. Considering how narrow the cave is, we will be like fish in a barrel if they spot us too early. Let's do this instead. I will lead the main group in from the beach and engage them outside, drawing out their main forces. Meanwhile, you and Shuan Pai will slip in from behind and set fire to their ships. This will cause a panic and we'll then use all our strength to force them back inside the cave. Excellent plan. Let's go. Shuanpai, are you alright? It appears that the pirates found out about this passage and set a trap in the water. The blade has gone straight into my stomach. Damn. I must call for help. Maybe the others haven't launched the attack yet. I'll be alright. You can do it.
Here you are, you bastard! You won't get away from me now! I was not going anywhere. With your woman? I am sorry for burning down your village. I had no choice. A few years ago, a bloodthirsty tyrant appeared in my homeland, who had decided to conquer the whole country. My father stood against him and fell by the walls of our castle, together with our whole clan. I wanted to launch myself at my foes and die for my family's honor. But I realized that if I died, so would the memory of our clan. I gathered a handful of samurai most loyal to my father and went into exile. I swore that one day I would restore our clan. A fascinating story, but what does it have to do with the murder of hundreds of people? Your deaths were supposed to pay Fudo for the resurrection of my clan. Forgive me, father. I have failed. Before she died, she said that someone called Fudo promised to resurrect her family in exchange for people's lives. Fudo is a Japanese deity, believed to cast out demons with fire. I have never heard of people making sacrifices to him, especially human ones. Do you think we're dealing with a cult? I don't know yet, but something tells me that there is a person behind the name. Master Zhongfei, I would like to speak to you. You have taught me a lot since I've been with you. How to move during a fight, how to strike, how to center my chi, how to breathe, and even how to fall correctly. I've almost completed all the tasks set by Master Guan Li, from defending villages to washing these blasted floors. And now you want to take the monastic vows and become a student monk. Am I right? I won't argue with that. You're quick to learn, you train hard, and already fight better than many Shaolin monks. Yet I have one question for you. You have finally gotten revenge on the person who killed your grandfather and burned down your village. How do you feel now? For me, she was evil incarnate. Every day I imagined how I would take her life with my own hands. 
I wanted our nearest and dearest, people I'd never met, to die a painful death. You probably expect me to say that her murder didn't change anything, that I don't feel any better and other such banalities. However, I do feel better. Although not because I got my revenge. She was only human. She committed all these murders because she was unable to accept her father's death. I feel better because I was able to discard my hate towards her and feel sorry that she is dead. Mm. You have changed much since we first met, Wei Chang. Well, I agree. Wei Chang swore not to drink wine, eat meat, commit adultery, or kill. However, the Shaolin warriors were allowed to break the last commandment if they were in mortal danger. Apart from renouncing worldly pleasures, Wei Chung also had to forswear his common name and take on a new monastic name. Thus, Wei Chung went from being a simple fisherman to being the monk Dao Kung. Teacher Zhong Fei, why is my new name so similar to Dao Shan's name? The name of every new Shaolin monk is made up of three parts. The first, She, indicates that the monk belongs to our temple. We don't usually pronounce that part. The second part is taken from a strict order of names described 300 years ago in the poem by Abbot Fuyu. It is the same for all the students of one teacher, so my followers are always called Dao. The third part is unique for every monk, and is made up by the teacher. Let's move on to more pressing matters. Now that you are one of us, I would like to teach you another one of our techniques. Not many people know of it, and even less can do it. It is based on being able to completely control your chi. We usually start teaching it after months of preparation and meditation, but we don't have enough time right now. This technique is called the Three Ground Seals. Unlike Southern Elements, it works best when fighting against several opponents. This style drastically differs from everything you have gotten used to. Earth Seals allows us to use Qi for an indirect effect on your foes. The first seal is the Seal of Harmony. It weakens your enemy's defenses. The second seal is the Seal of Levity which lifts opponents into the air. Finally, the third one, the Seal of Concentration, draws the enemies towards you.
Wong Tai Shin, the official who told us the location of the Wuku base, has sent us another letter. He congratulates us on our victory and thanks us for helping the local residents while the head of the province does nothing. Gratitude doesn't make a meal. It would be better if he sent in the army. Wong Tai Shin is just the censor, and censors don't send out armies. He can only arrest those guilty of incompetence or corruption. The official also says that the situation is more complicated than it seems at first glance. He has invited me to his temporary residence in Hongzhou to discuss it in person. Zhang Lu and Dao Kung will accompany me. The Wuku have attacked the residents. Guan Li, what's the plan? Our first priority is to protect Wan Tai Xin. The residence is very large, and we don't know exactly where he is. We'll have to split up and scour the whole territory. As soon as you find the official, protect him until the others arrive.
Thank you for saving me. The Wuku have already found out about your arrival somehow. Ah, there is no mystery in that. The provincial governor is colluding with the pirates, and I have evidence to show his complicity in what is happening. That explains why nobody has gathered the troops and driven back the pirates so far. Why can't you arrest him? Hmm. You may not have heard, but our Emperor has passed away recently after a long illness. His son, Juitsu, who is still a child, has now ascended the throne. The young Emperor's retinue has been trying to agree on who will be regent until he reaches his majority. So far, all these advisors, eunuchs, and nobility have been mired in feuding and arguments. The common folk are suffering. No, they care about his power. Oh, uh, this is sadly true. Like all censors, I only obey the Emperor or his regent, and only he can authorize an arrest. My hands are thus tied in the short term. Unlike you, we are not bound by bureaucratic restrictions. We won't interfere in your conflict with the Governor, but if you have information regarding the Wuku, we are keen to hear it. <sighs> That's all I was hoping for. As you know, for many years, our country has been under the Haiji, a sea ban that forbids merchant ships of other countries from entering the Middle Kingdom ports. I clearly remember it being abolished right after the Wuku were defeated. It was said that lifting the ban would prevent the pirates from reappearing, and indeed, the Wuku were not seen for all those years. But the hygiene had one exception, the Ryukyu Kingdom. It alone was allowed to trade with us overseas, enabling them to amass huge wealth. Now, they've lost their exclusive position. I suspect that the Ryukyu merchants have hired the ex-Wuku to resume attacks. They will use their own people at court to push for the Haiji to be reinstated, using the new pirate invasion as an excuse. The death of the Emperor has also played into their hands. It's bad news all around, as it won't be easy to get to these merchants. Have you ever heard of a person called Fudo? One of the Wuku leaders mentioned him. Fudo? Hmm. No, I haven't. But I will try to find out what I can. In return, I would ask you to pass on any information that seems important to me. Any leads would be helpful right now. Agreed. The Pigeon has brought alarming news from the monastery at the top of Mount Juhua, one of the sacred mountains in Buddhism. The monks report that they have been attacked by pirates, but managed to drive them off. I know that monastery. Its monks are excellent warriors and have previously taught me a lot. It makes no sense for the Wuku to attack them, however, as the temple is small and holds no expensive relics. This is what we will try to find out. I already have another task for you, but Tao Kung, go there and try to find out what possible interest the Wuku have in the temple.
pump isn't working, which is a bad sign. If the mine gets flooded, many people will drown.
Awuku are attacking the monastery again. I bet the monks have taken shelter in the main temple. I hope they can hold on until our arrival.
The abbot is badly wounded and cannot come outside. But we all thank you for your help. I hope the pirates will finally leave us alone. What were they looking for, do you think? Once upon a time, our temple was the largest in the province. And a legend tells of an ancient relic that was kept in one of the caves. It possessed great power, and only a few chosen monks were allowed to come near it. Two hundred years ago, a strong earthquake destroyed a large part of the complex. It was then decided to move the relic to another, safer location, and the monastery soon fell into decline. The pirates could have found out about this relic from an ancient text written before the catastrophe. Do you know where the relic was taken after the earthquake? No clear records remain, but legends usually mention the Temple of Upper Heaven on one of the peaks of Huangshan. Thank you. This information will be of great help. The monks think that the Wuku are seeking an ancient relic that used to be kept in their monastery, but was moved to the Temple of Upper Heaven on Huangshan. The Taoist temple has one relic. This one has another. They're more like tomb raiders than pirates. This is all very strange. If you remember, Shang Lung said that the Wu Ku were also looking for something specific in the monastery on Mount Putuo. Putuo and Zhu Hua are sacred Buddhist mountains, while Long Hu, where we found the first relic, is one of the sacred mountains of Taoism. This reminds me of an ancient legend. But I need to check it first. You certainly will. But first, send a letter to Wan Tai Xin and tell him everything that we have learned. Then, we shall get a group together and visit this temple of Upper Heaven. Its inhabitants may also be in danger.
step away from the holy relic and leave at once, or you'll share the same fate as your minions. Damn, I ran out of time. I told Fudo that he should have ended you a long time ago, but he wouldn't budge. Blasted monastic solidarity. Fudo is a monk? Oops, perhaps I've said too much. Or have I? <laughs> yes, he's a monk. A Japanese one, of course, a Sohei. He frets that so many people have had to suffer, but still justifies his behavior in the name of lofty goals. Uh, he can't be such a bore sometimes. But why keep talking about him? Let's get down to business. I'm assuming this is the relic? If by relic you mean one of the sections of the Heshibi Jade Disc, then yes, it is. My guess has been confirmed. Heshibi? According to legend, this powerful artifact endows its owner with incredible power. All the manuscripts state that the disc disappeared 300 years ago during the Mongol invasion. That's right. As the barbarian army approached the capital, the order was given to break up the disc and hide it. The capital was Hangzhou back then, so the pieces were hurriedly hidden in these parts. Why is everything always so complicated? You could have just destroyed the disc. But no, you had to split it into pieces so that one day some psychopath would try to unite them and take over the world. While the Heshibi is whole, the energy contained inside it is in constant circulation and doesn't reveal itself in any way. If the disc is destroyed... This energy will be abruptly released and cause a terrible cataclysm. Right now the disc is not whole, but the instability of the shards can be controlled if they are kept in special places where power is concentrated. The sacred mountains of the Middle Kingdom are such places. The first shard was hidden in the Taoist temple on Mount Longhu. The second was hidden in the Buddhist temple on Mount Juhua and later brought here. The third shard should be kept in a Confucian temple, but we don't know which one. You keep talking about the great power that this disc bestows, but what is it exactly? The Shibi erases the boundary between worlds. Its owner can summon thousands of spirits from other worlds in an instant, and they will all obey his will. 
He will have to pay a terrible price for it, though. The person who performs this ritual binds himself to the disc and is torn from the wheel of rebirth. The disc absorbs its owner's essence after his death, and it forever becomes a part of Heshibi. The person responsible for all this has either gone mad in their hunger for power, or has nothing left to lose. This is why the abbot suggested that we keep the shard until the conflict with the Wuku is over. He said that the shard will remain stable for a long time if nobody tries to use its energy. Meanwhile, they will try to find a new place to hide it. Excellent. Let's take the shard and head back to the Tulu before the scouts start following us. While the heroes made plans, good news arrived from Wang Taishin. His informant on the Ryukyu Islands had found out some valuable information about Fudo, the Wuku leader. This person would meet them in the town of Naha, capital of Ryukyu. Half of the monks went there on Li Haibo's ship, while the other half stayed behind to protect the country from pirate raids. We've made it to Okinawa. I didn't think that I would ever come back here. They know my ship well at the local port. But I'm not exactly welcome there, so I've anchored in a secluded cove. Something tells me that you're no merchant, but a simple smuggler. An ex-smuggler? Where are you going to find a merchant as skilled with the spear as me? You're not actually that skilled with it. Ugh, you guys deserve a kick in the butt. I don't want to interrupt your fascinating conversation, but we should get down to business. The informer is waiting for us at a tea house in the center of town. Wang Tai Shin should be there already. If the Wuku are truly in league with the Ryukyu merchants, they may have people stationed all over the island. Let's split up to attract less attention. They don't look like simple pirates. Their armor certainly looks stronger.
This is the informant, if I understand correctly. Did he manage to say anything? Yes. Very funny. I found Wong Tai Shin's seal in the tea house, so I assumed that he was kidnapped by these samurai. We'll deal with this later, but now we should return to the ship, as I can already hear the guards shouting. The informant is dead, and Wong Tai Shin has been kidnapped. We can consider the operation a failure for now. Uh, don't give up yet. I know a man here named Kage Mosha, who is a veteran bandit and has spies on every street corner. He must know something. He landed in jail recently and won't be easy to reach. However, I've never yet met a jailer who'd say no to a bottle of fine plum wine. I'm barred from going in there, and no amount of wine will change that. You will have to meet with Kage Mosha instead. He's generally not very talkative, so tell him Redbeard said hello. He will understand. What about the warriors who attacked us? They clearly want Wuku. Across inside a circle is the symbol of the Japanese Shimazu clan. The Ryukyu merchants have collaborated with them for a long time, and may be using their soldiers for protection. As if the Wuku weren't enough. Now we have samurai as well. There's a riot in the prison, and the guards won't bother figuring out who's who. At least Lu Haibo will be happy that his wine was saved.
You Haibo's friend should be here somewhere. Kage Mosha Redbeard sends his greetings. What's with the yelling? I'm here! What do you know about the link between the Wuku and the Ryukyu merchants? I know everything. What's not to know? There's no direct link, since the merchants would never deal with the Wuku themselves. So they have a go-between. A Japanese man appeared here about half a year ago and offered the local wealthy people a deal. He promised to arrange a new Wuko invasion of the Middle Kingdom, such that the Emperor himself would rush to reinstate the Siban. The Ryuko merchants were to sponsor this deal and bribe your officials. And this intermediary's name was Fudo? That's right, Fudo! You really shouldn't be getting into this monk. It's so messy that even I didn't want to get involved. I went to see this Fudo as part of a gang for hire. Uh, but the conditions on offer were too good. We were allowed to keep almost everything we stole. But we had to attack particular temples and villages. I figured the whole thing stank of politics and did a runner. Better to steal than to get drawn into a war. You said that you went to see Fudo. So you know the location of his lair? I wouldn't call it a lair. He's got a huge mansion on the east side of town. With gardens in a pond. A real nice place. Give me your map. I'll show you where it is. Thank you so much. You have really helped us. I must hurry before the guards appear. Wait, wait, fellows. Open the door to my cell. Luhaibo didn't say anything about that. 
Here's the wine as a gift. That beard is a real dick. I'm going to shave him when I get out of here.
The ship's crew definitely won't be a hindrance to us anymore. Kagemusha told me the location of Fudo's mansion. It's right here, in the east part of town. Excellent news. Wang Taishin must be there. You will go inside and free the official, and we'll stand outside the gates and hold back the samurai reinforcements. Try to act fast.
Well, hello, my young friend. Huang Taixin? Could it be that you're Fudo? Do I look like a Sohei? <laughs> no, Dao Kung. We are simply business partners. We were brought together by the Ryukyo merchants, with whom I have dealt with for many, many years. My task was to feed Fudo and his helpers information. For example, I told them about the temple where one of the Heshibi pieces was moved to, conveniently revealed to me by a group of Shaolin monks. Moreover, I had to prevent the news of Wuku attacks from getting out, blaming it all on regular bandits or villagers' tall tales. The merchants regularly paid me for all this. How does Fudo plan to use the Heshibi? He intends to summon an army of spirits and use it to establish a new order in his country, one without samurai, clans, or wars. His plan is as melodramatic and naive as Fudo himself. But if anyone can do it, it's him. You won't listen to me, of course. But a final word of advice, Dao Kung. Let that madman take the Hashibi and go back to where he came from. You're right, I won't. Farewell, Huan Taixing. On their return home, the heroes discovered that Fudo's troops had attacked their camp in their absence. The defenders had fought bravely against the greater pirate force, but eventually, one after another, had fallen in battle. The bodies of Shang Lung, Yin, and Jin were mounted on their own staffs, and only the wounded leader of the monks was left alive. Fudo hadn't finished off Guan Li, but he had called up the white fire and burned the monks' eyes. He then took the shards of Heshibi, which were kept in the camp, and disappeared with the remains of the army as quickly as he had appeared. We have buried our brothers, but this will not weaken our resolve. We must find and attack the main Wuku base before Fudu obtains the third shard. It won't be easy to find, but Lu Hai Bo has an idea. Everything suggests that Fudu's main base is located not on the mainland, but on one of the islands east of Wenju. I have called together my old comrades, experienced captains, smugglers, and even adventure seekers, and they have agreed to help us with our search. After all, life will be easier for them if the Wuku are gone. This won't be a quick process. But it's the best we can do for now. And another thing. During the battle, we clashed with the Sohei, Japanese monks like Fudo himself. These warriors are incredibly strong and equal in skill to the Shaolin monks. Be careful when engaging them in battle.
Doesn't look like their powers are exhausted, and yet they're withdrawing. There must be a reason.
We follow the plan. While the Wuku outfit their ships for sailing, we approach from the west side of the fortress and break open the gates. Then we burst inside, put Fudo on a stake, take the Hashibi, and return home as heroes. I had no idea you were so bloodthirsty. Why do you think they call me Redbeard? <laughs> Cover me!
Well, where is this Fudo? Was I too late? We were all too late. He's eluded us yet again. He was in a hurry to leave. All his notes, diaries, and maps are on the table. Let's take everything with us and return to camp. Shuan Pai, you can study it on the way. Fudo's notes state that once he collects all the shards, he will head to the top of Mount Hiei in Japan. A huge Sohei monastery complex called Enryakuzi is located there. He wants to finish repairing the disc, and for that he needs a place of power comparable to our sacred mountains. Maybe to hell with the Hashibi, and to hell with Fudo. He's gone, and that's that. Let them sort it out amongst themselves. What does it have to do with us? Do you really think that with such power, and having conquered one country, he won't decide to conquer another? First Japan, then Ryukyu, Jeson, and then it will be our turn. Fine, fine. You've convinced me. When do we sail? Yesterday. So hurry up and get ready, and we'll be off. Trees can't be flowering at this time of the year. Fudo has begun the ritual, and the boundary between worlds is gradually being erased. I will tell you a story, Daoko. So listen carefully. In a faraway land, the whole country was divided among different clans. Some clans were bigger, some were smaller. But all had their leaders, the Daimyo. Incredibly proud people. They spoke a lot about honor and virtue. And for this reason, they often argued. They settled their arguments by pitting their soldiers against each other on the field of battle. One daimyo 
decided that the land should be united to settle his endless feuding. Because the only thing he knew how to do was fight, he began to unite the country using force and coercion. military campaign lasted a long time, until one day, he came to the base of a sacred mountain. A breathtakingly beautiful monastery stood on this mountain, surrounded by many villages. approached the monastery gates and said, I am uniting the country so that there will be no more wars. Bow to me and you too shall have peace and unity. why he demanded their obedience. For they already lived in peace with each other and the surrounding people. They refused the daimyo and shut their gates. his troops to burn down the monastery and all its inhabitants and to kill everyone in the villages down to the last infant. They say their screams can still be heard over that mountain. Just in time. I have already united the Heshibi, and all I have to do is complete the summoning ritual. We'll give you one chance. Return the amulet, and we'll leave. There's no reason for us to fight. Never. Thousands of people died on this mountain. They were burned alive in the name of someone's clumsy ideals, and slaughtered to teach others a lesson. Dao Kung, you lost your parents as a child. Or your grandfather died at the hands of my soldiers. 
Don't tell me that you wouldn't give anything just to have them back. Back as eternally hungry spirits? You don't want to bring them back. You want to get revenge on those who hurt you. Revenge? No. I shall banish the demons. Those that shout about uniting the country, but seek only power and to satisfy their own ambitions. Those that reach for their gold through the ashes of their innocent victims. You don't actually care about your demons or anyone's ashes. Save your dramatic speeches for your followers. Shut up, scumbags. Shut up! Udo and his mad plans came to an expected end. According to the monks of South Shaolin, the Heshibi was destroyed during the battle on Mount Hiei, and one can only guess if this is true or not. The Wuku were finished once and for all. Some say this happened thanks to the Emperor and his wise internal policies. Others say it happened on its own once the Wuku homeland was united and the long period of chaos and bloody fighting was finally over. But you and I know that it was all thanks to the nine skilled and brave warriors. The nine monkeys of the Shaolin. <laughs> <laughs>